Luke 8, 47 through 50. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told him why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. Luke chapter 8, uh, verses 47 through 50 is just the center portion of this longer story about Jesus and two people. The bleeding woman and Jairus. Jairus was a local synagogue leader um, in Capernaum. And uh, the bleeding woman was a person, we don't know where she came from, we don't know where, what city she was from, but, but she had been bleeding for 12 years. 12 years. Uh, she had gone to doctors, she had done everything she could for 12 years to get the bleeding to stop. And, uh, and it, it never did. There's nothing she could do to be healed. In Greek culture, or sorry, in Jewish culture, uh, if, you, if a woman started her period and the blood never stopped, even if, um, well, sorry, if a, if a woman started her period, she became ceremonially unclean. And if her period never stopped, she would be ceremonially unclean for as long as her period continued. So for her, she's now been unclean for 12 years, which means that anything she sits on is unclean. That means if she spends time with her family, like they've become unclean and it's just a huge burden for her, especially within their culture. Jairus was the local synagogue ruler. Jesus had been on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Um, so here's Capernaum. He had gone across to another side called um, the Decapolis. And there he had healed, um, a, well, cast out demons from a man, two men, a legion of demons. The locals say, get out of here. And so Jesus goes back to Capernaum. And when he arrives at Capernaum, Jairus is waiting for him at the seashore saying, at the, the, at the docks basically saying, Jesus, come quick. My daughter is dying. And so ill is, is, whoops, so ill is, my goodness, so ill is his daughter that she is, she is literally um, on death's door. So she is, she is like moments from, she is moments from death. Death's door. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Death's door. Uh, and so Jairus is making a really big decision here. Uh, the big decision is my daughter is in her final moments of life. Do I stay with her and let her pass with me holding her hand at least? Or am I going to leave my daughter and potentially miss her last moments so that I can see Jesus, because he doesn't know exactly when Jesus is going to come back from the Decapolis, right? But he's like, the second that Jesus gets back, I got to I gotta be here. When he gets here, else he may not come to see my daughter. So he decides to spend his last moments trying to save his daughter's life. The crowd is waiting for Jesus. He arrives, he gets off the boat. Jairus immediately comes to him. He's like, we got to go right now. And Jesus is like, let's go. And so Jesus is making his way from the docks to Jairus' house. And on the way there... To Jairus's house, that doesn't look like a house. On the way to Jairus's house, there's a interruption. A woman touches him, right? And it's this bleeding woman. She's no doubt hiding herself. She's been unclean for 12 years. People know who she is. If she's seen, all these other people become unclean as well for touching her. And so the bleeding woman, she's like, okay, what up? I'm going to sneak in and I'm going to touch Jesus because I know he can heal me, right? And Jesus says, I feel like some power has gone out of me. And that's the bleeding woman touching her, which is really interesting. I'm not going to answer that question here, but 
the question is, you know, does, is Jesus aware of his healing or how does she get healed if Jesus isn't aware of the healing? And there's all these sorts of things that you can ask. I'm not going to go into those right now. I want to really just notice this woman. So Jesus asked the crowd, you know, who touched me? The disciples were like, everyone's touching you. What kind of question is that? Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. So we get this woman here. Um, and if we were to kind of section this area off, which is Jesus and the woman's faith is what we see in this. Jesus is eliciting basically from this woman in the presence of all of her people, a situation where you can kind of give this last statement as we'll see here. Then the woman, right, seeing this is then, uh, you know, after, after Jesus stops. And you got to realize that Jairus is freaking out, right? <laughs> because he's like, we got to get to my daughter right now. Seeing that she could not go unnoticed, she decides to come to Jesus, right? She came trembling and fell at his feet. She is aware that she's been cleaned. Uh, and, sorry, not clean. That she's been made ceremonially clean by this bleeding stopping, but she she's aware that she has in uh, in a way kind of stolen healing from Jesus, and so there's this like fear coming out of her in this moment. In the presence of all the people, she told them why she had touched him. The why goes back to this bleeding, right? And boom, and how she had been instantly healed. So touching became instant healing for her right and and again uh jesus you know perceives that the power goes out of him how aware he is that this woman has been healed is, is unclear maybe he's genuinely asking um but but the point is this then he said to her right so this is this is kind of the concluding point of this woman's place in the story daughter your faith has healed you, go in peace. Remarkable statement. The power to heal is not in faith. It is in God alone, right? The power for anyone to be healed does not come from our faith. Our faith doesn't have healing power. It comes from God alone. And yet, and yet, Jesus would say to this woman, your faith has healed you. He's saying to her that, that your faith is the agent, whoops, agent of healing. And, and we've just got to wrestle with this. How can this be true, Jesus, right? Well, here's the thing. If the woman had come, you know, to Jesus, or sorry, if, if the woman had never believed that Jesus could heal her, she wouldn't have come to him at all. Um, if she had doubted that this would work there wouldn't have been a reason to go and touch his, his robe but but on some level uh she believed or hoped hope is the word i would like to use hoped that by touching jesus she would be healed and like when we talk about the gospel right what what god is looking for from us is is this hope this belief that by believing in Jesus and repenting of my sin, that my sin can actually go away. And the power for the sin to be removed doesn't come from my faith, but it's given to me on the basis of faith. And we see that happen wonderfully and uniquely in this miracle. Now, faith is a part of all of these miracles, but this one's unique in that she doesn't ask first, she gets healed first and does the, ex the talking later. So Jesus goes so far as to say, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And uh, if this go in peace is important, she needs to know that she's not done something evil, right? But it's, it's a really incredible statement. If we were looking at this climactically, um, I'll use blue here. This would be the climax of the story with this woman that's the high point in the story of the woman if we were to look at this more broadly and consider that this is a story about Jairus then this is the point the high point of tension for him because precious time is ticking by right he's losing time 
the they're supposed to be going as fast as they can and every second counts and and the fear that would be growing in Jairus the longer that this interchange goes on longer that the time here goes on Jairus's fear is that he's his daughter will die right that, that Jesus won't make it there in time so Luke reminds us that while Jesus was still speaking he's talking to this woman explaining to her daughter your faith has made you well Jesus is looking at her he's looking at the crowds Jairus is looking from the side and someone comes from the house of Jairus right the synagogue leader that's Jairus and says your daughter is dead and Jairus's worst fear just gets realized don't bother the teacher anymore so this is kind of the high point of crisis right high point of crisis and and so there's like a lesson right there's always this lesson for us to be learning as we watch Jesus and his interactions and people and their interactions right at, at this moment of the daughter has died don't bother the teacher anymore Jairus Jairus maybe fully right here in this moment loses hope right he's trying to get Jesus to his daughter before she dies fully believes that Jesus can heal his daughter but when the daughter is reported dead the servant says don't bother the teacher anymore it's clear that the servant doesn't think that Jesus can heal this dead girl or sorry bring her back to life right Jesus is still speaking to this woman and overhears this. And before Jairus, before Jairus can even break down and cry or respond or do anything, hearing this, right, in the middle of this moment, in the middle of this report, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. We have a couple of commands. Go in peace. Here's the other one. Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. <laughs> Crazy to think of death as a thing to be healed. But, but Jesus' words, don't be afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of death. Don't be afraid that this is irreversible. Just believe. You believe that I could heal? Now believe that I can bring her back from the dead, right? And she will be healed. So Jairus has this moment, this, this choice now, right? I believe that Jesus could heal her of her sickness. Can Jesus heal her of death, right? Will I continue to believe? Well, Jairus and Jesus continue to head on and uh, they go into the house and, and Jesus says, you know, the mourners are already there. They're already wailing. And Jesus says, she's not sick. She's just sleeping. And she gets her up, right? And and how cool is that, that, that Jesus is the only one who can take death and call it sleep. But that's the power of Jesus. And not that we should understand that this is the power of faith. That's not where the power is. The power is in Jesus. The power is in God. So that's not what this lesson is about. But this lesson is about the power of God. And, and I can experience this in my life. I can experience the power of God in my life by faith, right? Faith in a resurrection, faith in God being able to heal me of that which nobody else can. So these, these miracles, they're, they're profound, they're amazing. They, they kind of focus in on the here, the now, and our present problems. But there is a greater and, and, and more beautiful promise of, of ultimate death and sin and, and real uncleanness and God cleansing us and God making us um, well and God bringing us back to life. And again, all of that comes um, through the power of God and it's made available to us by faith.